Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. In recent times, Africa has witnessed a series of military takeovers that have raised questions in the minds of many whether the continent is ready to define its own course of democracy. While these military takeovers have been welcomed in some states like Mali and Burkina Faso, where civilians have rallied their support behind the junta, they have, however, faced a stiff resistance in other states like Guinea, Sudan, and Chad, where civilians are pushing for a return to civilian rule. The latest of these countries to have witnessed demonstrations for a return to civilian rule is chart where anti-government protesters on a Thursday uh, took to the streets of the capital in Jamena to mark the date when the military initially promised to hand over power, a period that has been extended to for another two years. Dozens of protesters are reported to have been killed in the country's uh, two main cities of Jamena and Mundu after security forces opened fire on them. The country has been rocked by a political crisis since President Idris Said uh, Debbie Idno was uh, killed on the battlefield in April 2021 while visiting uh, frontline troops. Uh, his uh, 30 year or 38 year old son, Muhammad Idris Debbie, was uh, then installed by the military as interim president. He had initially promised not to take part uh, in elections that would follow an 18 month transition to civilian rule. But as the deadline yet, a uh, nationwide forum staged by Debbie reset the clock. Chad is not the only state to be facing protests demanding for a return to civilian rule, as then has seen many of such protests uh, in uh, July this year. Mm -hmm. Thousands of protesters rallied in the capital, Khartoum, with uh, demonstrators blocking a number of roads with uh, barricades and burning tires demanding the restoration of civilian rule in the country. A few weeks later, thousands uh, once again took to the streets to renew demands uh, for civilian rule after last year's military coup. Uh, Guinea cannot be left out of the list as at least five people were injured after security forces fired at anti-government uh, protesters in the capital Conakry on Thursday after demonstrators were uh, pushing for a junta uh, that uh, took part in a September 2021 coup to restore civilian rule, set up roadblocks across the city and burnt tires. In August, a Guinean political coalition had called for a renewed demonstration against the ruling junta, ending a truce for lack of response to its demands for credible dialogue on the transition to civilian rule. Is transition to civilian rule a solution to state run by junta? This is Views on the Continent. Stay with us. It is always a pleasure to know you are watching Africa Media. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on this uh, other edition of uh, Views on the Continent, where we take a look at what is uh, making headliners across the continent, what uh, the continent is uh, facing as problems, and how we can seek uh, possible solutions to these uh, problems faced by the continent. And today, our focus is on the fact that uh, several African states uh, that were recently, uh, or that recently witnessed a coup d'etat, uh, civilians are on the streets are protesting and asking that uh, a civilian rule returns to the country. Now, the uh, question we are putting out this day, if uh, transition to civilian rule is a solution to this state uh, run by the military, that is what we would like to find out from you. If uh, there is another solution to the problem, or is it just the fact that uh, a civilian must uh, take, uh, take uh, back uh, power or we must take over the reins of the country for things to go normally. That's what we'll, we'll be talking about this day on the program. And uh, uh, this uh, is being sparked recently by what happened in chat on a Thursday where uh, police uh, security officers opened fire on protesters who went out to uh, demand for a return to a civilian ruler after the son of uh, uh, President uh, Idris Dabi Idno uh, took over the reins of the country after his father uh, passed on on the battlefield uh, in uh, 2021. And now uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the plan was that uh, the uh, military was going to stay in power for 18 months. Uh, but then 
18 months are over, but the military is still in power. So civilians are demanding that a civilian takes back or power in the country. Yeah, so that's what we shall be talking about this day on the continent. And if you are joining us uh, for the very first time, this is an interactive program where you can always call us and tell us what you think about the day's topic or any other issue that is of interest to the uh, continent at this uh, point in time. And when that moment uh, comes, our numbers will be put on the screen. You can call us, tell us what you think about the day's uh, topic. Also, this program is streaming live on Facebook. Facebook, uh, uh, African Media, you can visit our Facebook page and watch the program. Drop a comment. Tell us what you think about today's uh, topic. Uh, and also uh, to let our televiewers that is a program where we get uh, resource persons to uh, throw more light on the day's uh, topic. And uh, today uh, joining us uh, on the program is uh, Mr. Elijah Enoakua. He is a researcher uh, with uh, Leaks University uh, on African uh, Developments. Hello, sir, and thanks for honoring our invitation this day. Hello, uh, Laurentia, and um, all the viewers of African media all over the world. Um, hopefully, we're going to have a fruitful discussion about this. It's very cardinal issue that is plaguing the continent of Africa. So, thank you so much. Thanks James. for having me. All right. Thank you so much uh, for uh, being with us this uh, day. Uh, now, uh, before we dive into uh, today's uh, discussions, uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, what actually happened or has been happening in uh, Chad for the past uh, a few days, especially uh, yesterday, where uh, dozens of uh, protesters lost their lives when uh, the security officers opened a fire on them as they took to the streets to uh, demand, uh, demand that the country returns to a civilian rule. Take a listen. A violent crackdown on anti-government protests in Chad on Thursday killed at least three people, family members and a hospital worker said. That's prompted criticism from the African Union of the repression of demonstrations. Pro-democracy protesters took to the streets calling for a swifter transition to democratic rule. The country is governed by a military council led by President Mahmoud Idrisdebi, who took over following the battlefield death of his father, President Idris Deby. The council was only meant to rule for 18 months, but pushed back elections to October 2024. The 18-month period expired on Thursday, prompting opposition and civil society groups to call people to the streets. The government banned the protests, but demonstrators were defiant. Burning tires blocked streets in the capital and Jemena on Thursday morning. Police fired tear gas and rubber bullets to break up gatherings. As well as the three people killed, several were wounded. A spokesperson for the government did not respond to a request for comment. That's what uh, happened in the chat uh, yesterday, that uh, Thursday, when demonstrators went out on the streets to uh, demand uh, why the military is still in power and the country has not returned to civilian rule as uh, was uh, decided uh, that the military was going to stay there for 18 months and then uh, decide on the way forward for the country. Uh, now, some reports have that uh, uh, over 100 people were killed, uh, while others talk of uh, a lesser number. And uh, these uh, persons were killed in the country's uh, two main cities of uh, Jamenda and uh, Mundu. Now, uh, we are also going to take a look at uh, what uh, has been happening in uh, Sudan, Guinea, and uh, Mali as concerns a return to a civilian rule or not, how uh, the civilians have gone out on the streets to uh, make a call for uh, these countries that were that have recently witnessed a uh, coup d'etat that a civilian takes back over as a ruler of these uh, respective countries. Let's take a, a, a listen and a watch of what has been going on in these countries. Dozens of Guinea's representative parties threatened Wednesday to call for demonstrations if the ruling junta persists in keeping them out of the transition council and delaying the return of civilian power while humiliating their leaders. The parties signed a collective agreement signaling a breakout from their previous commitment to restrain from any form of disruption towards the junta, who took power by force in September 2021. The head of the junta, Colonel Mamadi Ndomboya, who became president on October 1st, has pledged to hand over power to elected civilian at the end of a transition period, but he has refused to issue a timeline as to when this will happen. 
Meanwhile, several parties have reproached the junta with a unilateral vision. The suspect it is seeking to discredit and humiliate its leaders by pushing them out of their homes in the name of a program to recover state property, as it has just done with two prominent national figures. A call for the repression of economic offenses set up by the authorities has become an instrument which, according to them, is being used to disqualify troublesome political leaders. They are now calling for a permanent framework for dialogue to discuss on the timeline to the return of civilian power. They are also demanding respect for the law and human dignity. The military seizure of power was welcomed by population exacerbated by poverty, corruption and the repression of the last few years of President Alpha Conde. Hundreds gathered outside the presidential palace in Sudan's capital Khartoum on Tuesday, calling for the military to dissolve the government. The country is in the midst of what civilian Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok has called the worst and most dangerous crisis of a two-year transition from autocracy. <laughs> civilian politicians have been ruling in a fragile partnership with the military since President Omar al-Bashir was ousted in 2019. But relations have soured. After Bashir loyalists attempted a coup last month, civilian leaders have accused the military of trying to seize power. The protesters in Khartoum, such as Mohammed Abdel Kader, accuse civilian political parties of mismanagement and monopolizing power. We are sitting here with our tents, our pots, our animals and our meat. We are sitting here until Hamdok finds us a solution. Either he leaves or his cabinet leaves or the story ends. We are staying here and just like we removed 30 years of rule, we will remove two years of rule. The crowds have been assembled by a coalition of rebel groups and political parties who have aligned themselves with the military. After an emergency meeting on Monday, Sudan's cabinet said a crisis unit was being formed with the aim of bringing all sides together to find a solution. Pro-civilian political parties are planning their own demonstration on Thursday, the anniversary of a 1964 revolution. Several hundred Malians gathered Friday in Bamako to support the junta, the army and the military cooperation with the Russians while denouncing regional bloc, ECOWAS and their sanctions. The various organizations that had called to gather on the independent square also had in their sights the presence of Malian territory of thousands of peacekeepers of the UN mission MINUSMA. We don't want MINUSMA anymore. We do not trust MINUSMA. We do not want our country to be put under Chapter 7, which means put under trusteeship. How can we want to put a country under trustee when its army is able to recover its territorial integrity? Today we have come to say goodbye to MINUSMA. The demonstration included leaders of the M5 RFP party who denounced the sanctions imposed on Mali in February by regional blocs ECOWAS and the West African Economic and Monetary Union, UMAO. We are showing ECOWAS that we have chosen these soldiers for the transition. The duration is not even our problem. All we want is for this country to stabilize, for this country to find dignity. The military junta in Mali seized power in August 2020 following protests over the government's handling of the war against the jihadists. Thank you so much uh, for uh, those uh, reports, uh, uh, of a flashback of what has been happening in this country. So the demonstrators going out on the streets uh, uh, demanding that the country returns to uh, civilian rule in uh, Sudan. That was in July and August, and in Guinea, that was in August when uh, demonstrators took to the streets to uh, ask the military to hand back a part to a civilian. So our question this day is, uh, is uh, transition uh, to, uh, to civilian rule a solution to a state uh, being run by the junta? So that's what we would like to find out from you. Uh, so uh, when the time comes, our numbers will be put on the screen so that you can call us and tell us what you think. And remember, we are streaming live on Facebook, uh, Afrique Media. You can visit our page and drop a comment. Uh, now, let's uh, dive straight away into uh, today's uh, discussions. Uh, now, coming back to you, uh, Mr. Elijah Enoaku, uh, 
And now, what can you say about this uh, recent uh, uh, military takeovers in the continent? Uh, we know something uh, must have sparked this uh, spate of uh, uh, coups that have happened recently in the continent because uh, there was a period when we, uh, when you hear of a coup in Africa, it was not uh, uh, so, uh, so, so, so surprising. But recently, something that had cooled down for a while, it suddenly uh, came up again. What can explain this phenomenon? Uh, Laurentia, uh, for the sake of your audience, uh, I want us to, you know, you started talking about Chad and you now went to some of these other countries. For the sake of the audience and for education of the public and also a vivid discussion, I want us to look at the trend of what's happening in Africa because all these analyses that you've done and the reporters that have done that, you will see a trend in what's happening. It is not that Africans prefer one form of government to the other. What the people are asking for is a government that represents their aspiration. It doesn't matter if it's a military junta or it's a civilian government. What the people are asking for is a government that represents their aspiration, what they want. A government that is out to look for their interests not a government that's installed there by some foreign powers mm. that is trying to, you know, foster or bring to, uh, to the front the agenda of some foreign powers. That's what's happening. If you start with Chad, that you start, uh, that's currently going on a boiling and all whatnot that's going boiling, you will see that the people are not just protesting because of the presence of the junta. If you follow the analysis and follow people that are talking and look at the case and the history of Chad, you'll find out that the people are angry at French manipulation. Yes. They are angry at French mm. influence in their governance. That is where the problem is. It's not whether it is a junta or it's a civilian run. That's not where their problem is. It is because the French are constantly manipulating the government in charge and the people want to take their country back. You can put it that way. The people simply want their country back so that they can have an influence. Because if you look at the transition, the son of Idris Dibi said that it was going to be a two-year transition and the people were patient. They said, okay, your father has died. You took over power. Let's go in for a two-year transition. After the two-year transition, what happens? They have now extended mm -hmm. into another two years. And given the, uh, the son of Idris Dibi, the, the chance to run, which is automatically, we know what happens in Africa, automatically saying that he's going to be the next president in that two years, because there's no way that some other person is going to win when the military is in charge of everything. So people come up and they are saying, hey, no, this is not what we want. This is a foreign power manipulating our country, controlling our country, and we are tired with it. So... If the junta was there and is serving the interests of the people, I don't think you're going to see what you see in the streets. Mm. So people are angry with the manipulation of their government by a foreign power. The <laughs> it is before he died. If you watch the, the, that he said, he wanted to relinquish power. He did not want to continue ruling. But France, she explicitly called the name. It wasn't something that people were doubting. He said, the French came in and said, he cannot resign now because they don't have any person to replace with him. So he had to do what? The French, when he changed the constitution to run again, we do not find the French who are supposed to be custodian or democracy as they make the, uh, the whole world to understand that they are a democratic country and they're trying to institute democracy in Africa. We did not find the French against what he was trying to do. So he said they wanted him to pay, so he was there. Now we find the French, just to tell the contradictions in the French policy in Africa and all over the world. We have the French that are against the junta in Mali. They say that junta extended its power, but the same France has instilled the son of uh, uh, Idris Deby as a junta, and they have no problem with that. And it was a, an eyesore to see the current French president, who is supposed to be a Democrat, go and stand hand in hand 
with a military ruler to install the son of Idris Deby. That was a public outcry, even to any person who seems to understand the semblance or the tenets of democracy in the world, to see a democratically elected president go and install a, uh, uh, a, a general mm -hmm. as the head of state of a country in Africa, standing hand in hand, taking pictures, and then condemning, condemning, you know, another junta in a different country. That tells you that when you see rioting like this, Africans are tired of being manipulated by the West. It is not the form of democracy that matters here, Lorenzo. Let's be very clear, because we've seen elsewhere, just like you mentioned, in Mali, we find the population is behind the military junta. Why? Because they believe that is the junta, that is, you know, the government that represents their aspiration. Not some for All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elijah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, if you're just joining us, this is Views Forum on the and Continent. And that is the same junta. Carry on. Carry on, Mr. Elijah. Okay. Let's go go to Burkina Faso Because I wanted to set a trend so that people want to see what the trend is. And to make this conclusion that people are not protesting against the kind of government they're but protesting against western manipulation okay. puppet leaders that are being installed and forced down their throat you go to burkina faso when uh, uh gamiba took over power everybody was jubilating in 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 a uh, burkina faso because they thought this guy has come up to power mm -hmm. and he's going to you know channel the aspiration against what um uh, blessed compare had did but they realized that the same bamiba who came out from the parliamentary group that supported Blaise Campare, went and took Blaise Campare, because you need to understand something. In Burkina Faso, there is a split within the military. Mm. You have a, a faction that supports, you know, that was created by Blaise Campare when he killed uh, uh, Thomas Sankara. Sankara. It's like what we call in Cameroon uh, the, the, uh, the presidential guy. It wasn't there before. So he created it because of the fear that the military were going to take over from him. So when he created that unit, that unit was the unit that was supporting him all along. So Damiba came from that unit. So in order, you know, when they overthrew Blaise Campare, in order to, you know, uh, make those units, uh, those people happy, he decided to go and bring back Campare with the influence of France, because France is the people that eliminated Thomas Sankara. When he brought him back, people knew where he was going. They knew that there is some foreign influence that has come in and is manipulating their country. So when this Ibrahim Chowdhury took over, you can see the jubilation in the country. Mm. You can see the people are behind him and they're giving him their support. The trend continues. If you go to Mali, it's the same thing. The junta there, people are giving them their support because they believe that that is the junta that represents them. The case of Sudan is different, a little bit different, because this is a junta that has accepted a, a power-sharing government, but there are reports, legitimate reports that we get, that there is still some foreign influence that is behind it. Again, the people are asking, is this the government that represents us or the government that represents foreign interests? That is where the problem is in Africa. As long as this government do not represent the people, you are going to find this, you know, uprising all over the place. Mm. You're going to find all this unfortunate situation where we are talking about almost 100 people dead in Chad as we speak. And this is a country that is rich in oil, rich in other minerals, but they are in abject poverty. Perfect. Why? Because you have a few people that are ruling, not for the interest of the common man, but for the interest of somebody, not even in Africa. A foreign power manipulating. That is what this is all about. People are angry because their government, whether it is military or civilian, does not represent the aspiration of the people. That is where the trend is, and that's where the problem is. 
Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elijah. Now you mentioned that uh, the uh, a, this influence of uh, foreign powers on the, the leaders of of, of, of the continent uh, and them not reflecting the aspirations of the people is what is pushing uh, most of these uh, uh, people to the streets to uh, demonstrate. Now, what can explain the fact that uh, this uh, people uh, or this our leaders, leaders of uh, Africa, they continue to let themselves uh, to be manipulated by uh, these uh, foreign powers? Is it that uh, they are unable to make their own decisions or is it that there are certain conditions uh, or because there is something I would like to understand why is it so difficult for them to be able to say no when these powers come in to try to enforce or propose a certain uh, uh, certain uh, uh, conditions on them to be able to run their countries what explains the fact that they keep listening to this uh, uh, foreign powers and keep uh, giving into their manipulations there are multiple reasons for that the multiple reasons for that, uh, Laurentia, and your one-hour show will not give us time to really delve into why these African leaders are behaving the way they are. The number one problem is that this lack of political will. The lack of political will. Because if we have a leader like Thomas Sankara that had the political will to turn things around for the good of the people, I am telling you Africa will change. If you have leaders like uh, uh, Mugufuli, that came to power within four years. He was transforming the country all around. You Things will change in Africa. So the number one is lack of political will. Some of them are there for their stomach. They're there for their family. You find a, lead, a, a country like Nigeria that is so rich, you find the oil minister of that country embezzling billions of naira just within seven years being a minister. That's to tell you the kind of wickedness we find in the leaders in Africa. Number two, some of the accords that African leaders have signed as countries with these Western leaders is horrendous. As we speak, as we speak, you should understand that African leaders who are former French colonies are still paying colonial taxes to France. How is that possible? Not only that, you have military accords that some of these African leaders have signed with their colonial masters that says, if for any reason you attack, we have the right to come in and do this. And they use some of the, you know, the, 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 the article of those military accords to directly intervene in the affairs of the country. Those accords are killing African countries. Some of the accords give priority, prime priority to France, for example. I mentioned France because some of these countries, a lot of these countries that we are talking about are former French colonies. A lot of those accords give French, France, the prime priority for exploitation of minerals in their country, except France does not have the capacity and the means to exploit before they were even considered a second power. They are now competing now with Russia and, 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 and China. But some of those accords have those articles in them that before you give out A, B, C, France has to be considered first. Number three, you will find, for instance, these colonial relics of the France CFA that is destroying a lot of African countries and they make them so indebted to France that you have your own foreign reserves in your country. You produce gold, you produce um, uh, diamond, you produce all these minerals that are going to help you, help your economy be stabilized within the foreign, uh, uh, within the uh, international market, but you have your reserves that are tied to the reserve of France in such a way that if there is fluctuation in the French economy, if there is an up balance in fluctuation in the currency exchange, France get the benefits, African countries don't get the benefits. So those accords, I can go on and on and on to tell you how African economies, especially those that are foreign French colonies, are so interwoven with France in such a way that some of them, well, even when they try to disentangle themselves, they still find themselves back into the same web. It's like they are tied from the strings. It is only those courageous ones that will stand up and say, no, we have to renegotiate this accord. No, we cannot be bound by the terms of this accord. No, we have to do A, B, C differently. Other than that, if you have puppet leaders who come in there and they just read whatever accord it is and they go by it, 
Africa will remain in the same position and they will continue to be playing the second fiddle to all these colonial powers for a long time. If those accords are not revisited, even with the IMF and the World Bank, I'm telling you the truth, these countries also contribute a huge amount of what Africa is going, I mean, at these institutions, contribute a huge amount of what Africa is going through. For, I mean, a chart that we are talking about today, you understand you're in Cameroon, you know about the Cameroon Chad Pipeline Project. That Chad went in with the World Bank. If you understand the terms of that project, you will understand what some of these African countries are suffering in the hands of these Britain Woods institutions and the Western powers. So it's a multitude of forces, but is that enough for African leaders to say, oh, we have these challenges, we have these accords, we have this. No, it's not enough because we are talking about sovereign countries. You come up as a president, you have the right to renegotiate any contract like we saw what Mugufuli did. When Mugufuli came to power, what did he do? He looked at the accords that were signed with Chinese companies, Belgium companies, and all that. He saw that they were cheating the country colossal amount of money in terms of taxes. What did he do? He renegotiated all those accords. Renegotiated all those accords and put a condition that all those companies that were investing their money in those companies, they should have their stock listed in, in uh, Tanzania and not in their own countries. When those stocks were removed and listed in Tanzania, within a short space of time, if you know the amount of money that was brought back to the economy of Tanzania, it was colossal. So again, I can go on and on and on and on. But the truth is, it is a lack of political will from those African leaders to disentangle themselves from their colonial masters that is why those colonial masters continue to have a grip on the African countries and the economy, and whoever comes to power will continue to be a slave, except they stand up and say, no, we cannot be bound by this 1950 accord or 1960 accord or whatever accord you went into with those colonies. We have to renegotiate on an equal basis and work as partners. Then African countries will be liberated from these shangles of colonialism. Okay, now, uh, do you think uh, there is a way that uh, Africans uh, uh, in the different countries uh, can uh, uh, come, can they can find a way to, to 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 look for that kind of leader who has that political will, uh, or influence a leader that has that kind of political will to run the country? Is there a way that? Uh, what I'm trying to ask is. If it's possible that these uh, different citizens of these countries uh, they are able to elect uh, leaders that have the uh, political will, that have the will of the people, that have the people at heart, even the diaspora, what is it that is uh, missing? What is it that can be done so much so that Africa or the new generation of Africa can have leaders that stand for the people and for the welfare of the people? Yeah, this is where the colonial masters come in and manipulate things. Even at the level of elections, they will talk about democracy, and it it becomes democracy democracy with strings attached, and they will come in, influence even elections in Africa mm -hmm. to get a puppet leader that will represent their interests. So what I am saying, what my 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 my, my message to all African countries is. All the young people that have been so aloof and disenfranchised in democracy, in politics, in policy management, and all whatnot, should wake up. Because we are seeing that happening in Burkina Faso. We are seeing that happening in Mali. We are seeing that happening elsewhere. When leaders and the young people rise up, intellectuals, civil society, by and Salam, all those in the street, rise up you will not shoot everybody down. That's right. But when we find people that are aloof and start saying, on the fair command, on the fair command, Africa will remain in the same position because these colonial masters know the strings that they are pulling. They know what they are doing. Now, you will look at the juntas that have taken place. It will shock you to hear from a person like me that I don't really care if it is a junta that is in power or a democratically elected person that is in power. I don't really care. If it's going to take Africa, juntas, military juntas, to get to where we're going, I'm telling you, as long as blood is not shed, because that's what we don't want. 
We don't want bloodshed. We don't want people being killed. And, but it's going to take military junctures to get Africa to where they are going. We don't care. Because Africans are tired of, of being controlled from the West. Having leaders that are being controlled from the West. If we have uh, uh, an Asimi Goiter in all African countries, that is going to bring about the real African spirit. If we have a, uh, a blessed Kampara that's not, I mean, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, a Thomas, Thomas Sankara, Sankara that's Sankara. not going to be killed by a, a blessed Kampara somewhere, we are ready for Africa to take its right place. Even an Ibrahim Traore, like you see, we, he seems to be showing evidence of, you know, uh, elements of what Thomas Sankara was trying to do in Burkina Faso. But what we don't want is a Dumbuya, a Damiba, those ones that will still be having friends pulling the strings. That's not what we want. We want leaders that are there for the African people. Mm -hmm. Leaders that will stand up and say, we are equal partners. We are no more colonies of whichever country, whether you call it France or call it UK, you call it United States, whatever it is. We are no more colonies. We are independent countries and we want to work together as partners. Any leader that has that aspiration, I'm telling you, African people are willing to have that leader. It doesn't matter if that leader comes through a military coup, a junta, or civilian. As long as you are there for the people, the people will rally behind you. And that is what we are advocating for in Africa as of this date. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elijah. If you're just joining us, this is Views uh, on the Continent, and we are talking about uh, military takeovers in the continent and uh, demonstrations that have been going on in these different countries uh, that have uh, witnessed uh, military takeover, asking that uh, the uh, country returns to a civilian rule, uh, is a return or to civilian rule a solution to this uh, uh, country's uh, run by the military. That's what we would like to know uh, or would like to hear from from you your thoughts on this our numbers on the screen our lines are open you can call us and tell us what you think about uh, today's uh, topic uh, if actually uh, the military uh, uh, that is at the arm um, of the country if that is what is causing uh, uh, issues for this uh, different state and if a civilian comes to power uh, things are going to change for the better that's what we'd like to uh, find from you uh, this uh, day uh, so uh, you can equally uh, visit our uh, Facebook page uh, we are streaming live Afrik Miria drop a comment and uh, we will uh, read it out to you uh, so you can always uh, get to us tell us what you think about today's uh, topic now coming back to you uh, Mr. Elijah uh, let's uh, uh, take a look at at this uh, issue of uh, military rule on the continent. You just mentioned that uh, it doesn't really matter if it is the military or a civilian who is uh, ruling the country. What matters is if that leader has uh, the aspirations of the people at heart or he has the welfare of the people at heart. But when you when this uh, military uh, takeovers uh, took place in these uh, different countries, you would discover that, uh, uh, especially the regional blocs or some of the people, we thought that they the ones to uh, uh, take a look at these issues and find a lasting solution or a solution that is going to be beneficial to the people of Africa you discover that uh, they are totally against the fact that the military should be at the helm of the country. Uh, we take a case of uh, Mali, uh, for example. We know Mali went through a lot of sanctions, uh, and the, uh, the regional bloc ECOWAS was bent on the fact that power be returned to uh, the civilian. But when you take a look at the people of Mali, they are strongly behind Asimi Goita. So how can one, how can we... Uh, uh, Put aside this uh, uh, this ideology that people have that the military, if the military is at the arm of the country, things will not be run properly, or they have their own way that they are going to do things, and not have this idea that whoever is there and has the people at heart, be it the military or the civilian, that is what it good, is good for the continent. The regional blocs are taking their cue from the same colonial masters that Africans are protesting against. That's where the problem is. Those regional blocs, they are toothless bulldogs. They are being controlled by the same Western colonizers. That's where the problem is. When there were problems in Africa, there are wars all over. How many wars so even internal problems as the regional bloc, colossal mistake and the colossal blunder of African regional blocks. How many of them have intervened? 
to resolve the problems within the countries that we have in Africa, whether you talk about ECOWAS, you talk about CEMAC, we talk about African Union, or whatever it is. Tell me one conflict, one conflict that African Union or ECOWAS or CEMAC has resolved. Zero. Zero. They have resolved no problem at all. So they are part of the blocks that is putting on sanctions on Mali, crumbling the economy of Mali, crumbling the economy of uh, Burkina Faso, crumbling the economy of Guinea, instead of going in to see how they can actually carve out a solution that is going to involve the protagonist and see how they can resolve that problem. You are in Cameroon. What has the African Union done in the crisis? You don't even call it a crisis. The war that is going on in the north and south What have they done? What has CEMAC done? What has African Union done? Zero. So these people are also in the pockets of the Westerners. They have no, they do not have the interests of Africans at heart. They will go there, impose a sanction, weaken the economy of that country, weaken the government of that country, weaken everything that country is trying to do, and therefore make that country at the mercy of the same colonial masters that that country is trying to disintegrate or dis, uh, disintegrate, disintegrate itself from. That's what they're doing. They are not conflict resolution bodies. That is a tragedy that we find in Africa with the African regional bloc. They have not succeeded as conflict resolution bodies, because that's what it is. That is the strategy in Africa. That's what it is. They are supposed to go in, like I said already, bring the uh, protagonist. Look at the problem in Mali. If you look at the problem in Mali, I'm telling you, that is a solvable problem within the African continent. It's a solvable problem. But you cannot take the Malian government, that is a protagonist in the issue, and ask them to solve the problem with the people in the north. No. How did that problem come about? That problem came about because it has been years of French division of the north. If you remember, the northern Mali has been off and off of Mali. Sometimes we're sending Gambia, sending this, sending that, sending that. And finally, they started feeling themselves like maybe they're not part of Mali. Then, in the time of Gaddafi, those who fought that war the NATO imposed war, the same colonialists that imposed, I mean, uh, destroyed Ma Gaddafi. When they fought that war, these people went there to fight that war. When they were defeated, they ran back to Mali and started that. If you look at the Tuaregs, those are the people that are fighting. But this is a war that the Imam of Bamako has been able to say, I will negotiate a peace treaty between the North and the South. That is something the African Union is supposed to be doing. But what are they doing? They're imposing sanctions upon sanctions on Mali. They're imposing sanctions on uh, Guinea. They're imposing sanctions. That is, they're going to be imposing sanctions on Burkina Faso. Well, what will sanctions do? How will sanctions resolve the problem? Why not go in and bring the protagonist on a table of peace and say, you are brother, you can sit down. Why not go into Cameroon and bring the English-speaking region of the nation and bring the government on a table and say, you are a nation, your brother, you can solve your problem, you don't need to be at war. What are they doing? So African regional blocks are toothless bulldogs being controlled by Western powers, and they are useless in Africa. They are useless. They are of no use in the African continent. Sorry to disappoint your, your, your viewers, but that is the truth, because they are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So African people should take their countries into their hands. Am I advocating here for rioting or what not? No. Am I advocating for war? No. But what I'm saying, if there is a leader there, let's take an example, Paul Gagami. He's been there for a couple of years, I think 20-something. You have Western agitators already agitating and saying, this man should leave power. But we see what that man is doing. Despite all the other issues, political issues and prison, and which can be taken care of if we have a regional block that will go in there and talk with him and see how they can be resolved. But what are the Westerners doing? They are putting pressure and say, Kagami is a bad leader because he has been there for long. Is it longevity that matters or what he has done? This is what the people don't understand about Africa. They are trying to bring Western democracy that does not fit the African model to institute that in Africa. Africans are not after changing power every four days. Four, four days you change power, four days you change power. 
as long as they are not seeing the profits of that change of power, you are still going to see these people demonstrate on the street because they do not feel the impact of whatever power that is there in government. As long as the people are feeling it, I am telling you, they will vote for that person over and over. That is where the problem in Africa lies, Laurentia. Now uh, we, uh, we, are, we are talking about uh, uh, the regional blocks or uh, continental blocks that are there, but that they are not doing anything uh, for the people of the continent. Uh, uh, they are doing little or nothing for the people of the continent when it comes to time of uh, crisis for them to intervene and uh, try to find lasting solutions to the problems. They instead lag behind. So what then can you propose for the continent uh, at this point in time when we don't have uh, uh, regional blocks or continental blocks that uh, we can depend on uh, when uh, issues like this arise? Uh, what can Africans do? What can they do to be able to solve uh, their own problems uh, by themselves? Let me point out a few things to you uh, that has been happening. In countries where <clears throat> we found the people that have taken back their power, like in Mali. What has been happening in Mali is a prototype for a lot of Africans to learn. Mm. In those countries where, you know, there is still colonial strings attached. The second st stage is, again, when I say so, people might hear and say, these guys on TV advocating for coup d'etat all over Africa. Mm. No, that's not what I'm saying. The people of Mali advocated and wanted a change. How that change came, the ask came through coup d'etat. The, the case in your own country might not come through coup d'etat. Mm -hmm. The people of other countries like Burkina Faso, they advocated and they drove, uh, I mean, the Bless people me of Konak, uh, Guinea, they drove uh, Afa Konde away. People should be able to voice out their discontent with the government that be. Yes, there's going to be resistance. Yes, there's going to be opposition. But I'm telling you, you are not going to kill everybody. You're not going to, you know, use your gun to maintain yourself in power. When people are tired of a situation, they do something about it. African people should do something about these colonial masters that are holding their countries hostage. Yes, I am an advocate to say colonial masters are not every problem that is facing Africa. We do agree with that. But mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if African leaders, would, I mean, people would take their own nation to themselves, a lot of the problems that are happening in Africa will stop. When the West are saying that these people are determined to rule their own country for their own good, a lot of what is happening will change. The problem that we see in most other African countries is that there is so much anti-democratic lukewarmness when it comes to democracy. There's so much lukewarmness because, you know, the powers that be have succeeded, like I said before, to disenfranchise the people. If you call for an election in your country, Cameroon, for example, you'll find out that less than 10% of people will, for, will vote. Forget about what government is going to put out there because we know how they manipulate the powers. But if you look at statistics, less than 10 of them are going to vote. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they've been disenfranchised to a level where they don't care, they don't want to vote, they feel that nothing is going to change. As long as Africans continue to feel that way, I'm afraid to tell you, not much would change. But if they decide to take the Malian way to take to the streets, if they decide to take the way of the Burkina Faso to take to the streets, if they decide, unfortunately, to take the way of Chad, that we're seeing people dead, which we don't hope, we don't pray that people get killed. And if you are the one holding the gun there, you're gunning your own citizens, tomorrow know that you're going to be responsible for every soul you kill. People are tired of poverty. People are tired of situation where you is like somebody living in the river and then he's walk, washing his face with saliva. That's the situation of Africa. Chad, that we are talking about, this is a country with colossal amount of resources. But the World Bank pulled out of that Cameroon Child Life Project. You know why? Because Idris Gibi decided to use the resources from that project to buy arms in order to fight the rebels that were fighting him in the north which was against the agreement of the contract that they signed with the World Bank that said the money that should be used, I mean, the money that will come out from that Cameroon pipeline project should be used to ameliorate the lifestyle of the people. There were already projects that were sanctioned to go on from the process that would have been gotten from that pi pipeline project. But 
It is the BDC that pulled out because he wanted to use the money to buy arms to fight the country instead of going into a peaceful, peaceful settlement with his own citizen, he decided to fight. That is going to be a problem. Number two, number two, this is a lesson to the leaders that if you look at the amount of money that African countries are fighting to, I mean, are spending to buy weapons to fight their own people, it will shock you. Just go to the United Nations or, or, or Freedom Watch website or um, Human Rights website and look at the amount of money that African countries are spending to buy weapons, not to fight a foreign enemy or maybe their neighbors are fighting war with their neighbors. No, to fight war in their own country. Cameroon, where you are, if you know the amount of money that Cameroon government is spending to fight a war in the Northwest and Southwest, it will blow your mind. That is money that will have developed the country for about two to three or four years. But they prefer to use that money to fight a useless war that they themselves would have resolved the issue instead of going to war. So these are problems that African countries can resolve by themselves, by themselves, without calling in those, you know, colonial masters to come and help them. Mm. I can go on and on. Then the third one, which is the biggest, is the economy part of it. I already mentioned the accords that are being signed with these colonialists. If African people would be made to know how these accords are destroying the economy, they will be on the streets tomorrow. They'll be in the streets tomorrow. If you read these accords that African countries are signing with foreign powers, I'm telling you, you will be on the street. Every child in Africa will be on the street against it. So again, Africans should take their, their country back. In whatever way, shape, or form, that is how this continent is going to be liberated. Otherwise, even the next 100 years, we'll be on this program discussing the same problem, unfortunately. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Elijah. Now we have just a few more minutes to go, and before we go, uh, uh, would you agree with me that uh, Africans uh, need to be sensitized? Uh, because when you take, uh, when you listen to uh, many Pan-Africanists, they are of, of, of the opinion that uh, uh, democracy is not what Africa needs at this point in time. Africa needs to define its own uh, course or its own course of governance, how it's supposed to rule its uh, people. And would you uh, agree with me that Africans need Need to be sensitized uh, uh, on the fact that it doesn't matter whether it is a civilian that rules the country or it is a military that rules a military leader that rules the country. What matters is that whoever is at the arm of that country should have the people at heart. And how can Africans be sensitized about this? Because sometimes when you take a look at uh, some of these demonstrations. We have a good number of people who go out there just because they are following the crowd. They don't even know why they are out there protesting. So how can African be sensitized so that they can choose the right leaders for their different countries? Some of the things I already mentioned there will go to answer your question, uh, Laurentia, because the sensitization is not on whether Africans should choose between dictators or um, uh, civilian rule or military rule. Africans already know. They know. A leader that is there for the people. I will give you case studies. When Thomas Sankara took over power, even if that man was not killed, I'm telling you the truth, that's a military, uh, a military person. If he was not killed, even the next 20 years, I don't think you would have been able to replace Thomas Sankara in Burkina Faso. Impossible. He was the man of the people. People saw him and they knew that this is the person. When Africans see a good leader, they know it. I don't think there is so much sensitization that is needed. They know a good leader when they see one. That leader can come through the barrel of the box. That leader can come through a coup d'etat. That leader could be a fun or a chief. That leader could be whosoever. When Africans see a good leader, they know it. So Western democracy that is being slotted onto the, you know, into, into the throat of the people, is not just the only solution. Yes, it is a solution in certain cases because now we are talking about the West putting pressure on a, a on a, a semi goiter. They're putting a lot of pressure on him to relinquish power. But is that the solution? Because the civilian leader that was there did not solve the problem. Is that the solution? No. The people say, we want him. You're going to see the same pressure being put on Ibrahim Traore in Burkina Faso. You're going to see the same. In Chad, it is a different situation because 
Franks is playing a double hypocritical rule and the people see it. Franks is opposing Asimi Guita and all the other people, but is now propping up the son of Idris Dibi in chat. And the people are angry because the people want peace. Somebody that is put there by them, not a foreign power, to represent a foreign interest. That is where the contradiction is. Not because they are against a junta or one of they are against being controlled and ruled from the west that is where the problem is so people can decide whatever form of government their country is going to take it could be parliamentary democracy it could be whatever form they want to take africans should be allowed to decide their own form of governance right. that is my principle Yes, democracy is one of them. There's no doubt about that. Democracy is a form of government by the people for the people. people. But you can also have a benevolent leader. When they kill Gaddafi, Gaddafi was able to give free education to his people, electricity, this, okay. food, or whatnot. Yes, he was a dictator. But were the people actually complaining up against him, the West decided to get rid of him. And a lot of problems we're facing in Africa now is because of that war, if you don't know. The war in Burkina Faso is as a result of those people that left the war in, 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 in Libya, Libya and brought all the elite artillery that uh, Gaddafi had and everything. They ran away and came to Burkina Faso. They came to Mali. They came to... That is one of the reasons for the Sahel problem that we're having today because of those weapons that they took from Gaddafi and brought to their country and they're able to fight their various governments. That's the problem we're having. So sometimes the West thinks that they have all the power, they have all the answers. They do not have the answers to the African problem. Africans have the answer to their own to problem. The problem. They should let them rule their country according to the way they see fit. Am I advocating here for dictators to be all over Africa? No. no. What I'm simply saying is let Africans choose their own self-governing self bodies that is going to govern them and let them tra trade with the West as partners. Do not look down on Africa because, do not look down on Paul Kagame because he is not your so-called Democrat. But what mm -hmm. is he doing in this country? This man has given his country the best kind of economy that we are speaking. We, in the world as we speak today, world inflation is somewhere between 7 to 10 percent. But what is the inflation in Rwanda? 2 percent. 2 percent. How does he succeed to do that? Is it a miracle? That is a leader that knows what it means to rule an African country. Let him rule. But the West is putting pressure on him to give power, surrender power, surrender power, surrender power. And immediately he surrender power tomorrow, chaos. And that's what the West wants. Oh, Gaddafi is a dictator, he's a dictator. Immediately, immediately they kill him, chaos. Go and look at Libya today compared to the Libya in terms of Gaddafi. So you conclude that the Western ideas are not always the right ideas for Africa. And that is the conclusion. Let Africans decide their own course, decide their own form of governance, decide how they want to go, and let the West deal with them. And again, the hypocrisy of the West is alarming. They are putting pressures on all these people in Africa and all whatnot, but they go to uh, Saudi Arabia, they're dealing with the king. In the Middle East, they're dealing with kings. In this way, they're dealing with this. Dictators all over the world, they're dealing with them, but when it comes to Africa, oh, these are dictators. They're killing Africa. They have to kill them. They have to get rid of them. Western hypocrisy is at its apex when it comes to Africa, and Africans need to be aware of it. And to end, the French hegemony on Africa needs to start. France CFA needs to be abolished. And all those Western, I mean, African leaders that are becoming, you know, puppets to destroy Africa. And it might, my, my warning goes to Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is being used as we speak to despopulize Western Africa that is trying to get the independent from France. Because most of those countries are not independent. But you have puppet leaders in Africa that are being used. So those leaders should be careful because when Africans will rise up, they themselves will be on their heels to go to whatever country they are supporting. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Elijah. Thank you very much uh, for your time uh, this day. Uh, and it is on that note that we are going to draw the curtains on this edition of the program. Uh, Africa has to take its destiny into its own hands and uh, try to uh, stop uh, the manipulations uh, coming uh, uh, from the West. Uh, uh, we uh, were looking at uh, uh, Africa today and if uh, a transition to civilian rule is a solution to this uh, uh, country's uh, being 
been uh, run by the military uh, and uh, as we heard in our discussions uh, it doesn't matter who is at the uh, helm of the country uh, uh, be it a civilian be it a military uh, leader what matters is if that uh, leader has the people at heart has the country the welfare of its uh, people at heart uh, thank you so much uh, mr elijah he is a, a researcher with uh, leaks uh, university on uh, african uh, uh, development thank you so much for your time we also want to thank all our televiewers who took out time to be with us um, we thank our technicians who touched the buttons to make the program a successful one. Another edition of the program comes up Tuesday, 14 hours GMT. Do take the rendezvous. Join us to find out uh, uh, what is happening on the continent and how we can join our voices together as Africans to take the continent forward. Until then, you have a lovely weekend in the company of more of our transmissions. I appreciate it. I very appreciate all what you are Okay, about it. Good day and good day to all the viewers of Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Africa.